we're recording. Welcome back. This is a long-term still centric review of the Canon R5. Short story, it's wonderful. I've owned the camera for two years and a couple of months and it's great. I would buy it again. And yeah, it's gonna take some doing from Canon to uh, get me to switch. I've written some things down here. Check that out. And just for the sake of brevity, I'm gonna cover my experience, what I think is the intended use case for this camera, real world, what do I like, what do I not like, who is it for, is it worth it, and maybe some alternatives if I'm feeling sassy. So, experience. All right, I bought this camera in November of 2020. I paid for it, Canon did not send it to me and I have been using it for my full-time job, which is advertising commercial work for two years and a month or two. So also there's a dog carrying a part of a toy right there. So, so I think it's great. Uh, this is a camera for getting stuff done. It is shooting anything, anywhere, high frame rates, crazy resolution. It's just kind of a whatever you need, it covers kind of a camera. So. It's not a leisure camera. It's not a camera like this, or, you know, it's not some small thing that just makes you want to pick it up, right? This is a very specific, and I'm filming on it. It's a very specific tool, and when it's time to work, it's wonderful. Outside of that, I really don't go to the camera just to walk around and shoot photos or to take it on vacation or whatever. So, let's see, yep. Intended use, I think we just covered that. So real world, and I'm gonna look at my notes on here just because I don't wanna miss anything. Uh, the biggest thing to me that I can't stand about the camera is that the stupid power button is on the left side. So when I carry a camera around, this is the hand that holds the camera. It works all the controls, right? And when the camera's at my side, power button goes off. When I'm pulling the camera back up, power button goes on. I don't change anything, you know, inadvertently while the camera's powered off. Same thing on this, on, off. That's how most cameras are. But on this stupid thing, the power button is on the left. Really stupid, Canon, please fix it. Um, it's funny because Canon cameras are so comfortable to hold and so well built and robust. And the fact that they just completely put the power button in the most idiotic place on the camera doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so most of you don't care about that. Maybe some of you will. Uh, workaround. There is a MFN mother function button right next to the shutter, and I have programmed that to turn the screen and the viewfinder off. It doesn't really quite fix it, but it kind of eases my mind that it's not at least chewing through battery. If you press that multifunction button, and put the camera down with the viewfinder right up against something, the camera is going to think that you've put your eye to the viewfinder and turned back on. So yeah, it's a workaround, it's not perfect. Resolution, it's a little much for me. I think for the full frame world, that like kind of 30, 35, 20, whatever, that's better for me. And you know, my use case does include very large, physical displays of photos. And even on the 1DX Mark II, it's 20 megapixel full frame sensor. We've never had any issues with blowing photos up to huge sizes. So the resolution, not really impressed by it. It's kind of clunky in the long term as you accumulate tens and hundreds of thousands of photos. Uh, it's kind of a pain. There is a, I believe a smaller raw setting. I've not tested it yet but I've talked to a couple of people on Twitter that have had good experience with, that have had good experiences with it. So I'm interested in that. I'll probably do some testing because it would be nice to, uh, it would be nice to save some space. And I'm talking about saving space as someone that has like a full RAID system and everything. Uh, when you're thinking about a career in making anything photo or video, you need to not just be thinking about how much space does one shoot or one week of shooting take up? It's 
how is the next, you know, 10, 30 years going to look like and how am I going to manage that? So there's that. You can't see right now, but there are blue healers everywhere down here. Okay, next up. One of the card slots is an SD UHS-2, and the other one I think is a CF Express Type B. I wish both of the slots were the faster CF Express. Uh, again, this is a camera for getting things done, and so when you're importing media in the field, it's just a lot faster. And no, laptops and other things don't have a CF Express reader built into them, but that's fine. I have a little one that's great. It is a Delkin, I think. Works great. I wish both of the cards were faster. There's, Dot, do you need to go outside? Hold on. There are some features in the camera that are limited to the faster CF Express type B card, which are some of the video things, and I think the highest frame rate. Mode selection on the R5. It's weird. There's not a dial. You press this little button up on top. The screen pops up, with, and then you have to use the touch screen. It's just, it's pretty fiddly. Um, it seems like something that would be on like the cheapest, most entry level camera you could buy. I'm basically shooting in manual mode all the time or in aperture priority sometimes. So whatever. Okay. Enough of the negativity. What do I like about the camera? The autofocus. It is incredible. It is so good. And you know, I always heard that, oh, Sony is like the best autofocus and after shooting the R5 for a year and a half, last May, the super kind folks at Sony sent me a pile of gear to take on a week-long shoot. It was for Seeger in Arizona. And so I took the A1 and the 35 G Master, 24, the 50, all G Master lenses. And okay, uh, where did we leave off? My neighbor came over and returned the house key. So yeah, I was using the Sony A1 with the best lenses they had, and next to one another, the R5 was way more accurate and way faster. It was noticeable to me, so much so that I thought maybe I was doing something wrong with the Sony, and I spent some time messing around with that. Canon was better. Frame rate, 12 frames per second mechanical shutter. I do not care about the electronic shutter. 12 is more than fast enough. It's wonderful. It does it with tracking, autofocus, whatever. It's great. Speaking of frame rate, I've not yet encountered a, an electronic shutter that I feel confident in, I guess. I've not shot the Z9. Uh, I probably won't. I don't know why I would. And yeah, so for me, I'm limited to the 12 frames per second, which is not, like, that's crazy fast. That's all you need. I'm not uh, really impressed or intrigued by 20 frames per second. If you shoot some stuff like that and then realize that after the fact you have to go into the computer and cull the selects out of there, mm -mm. Next up, the color and the files. Color is really great. Uh, it took me a while to figure out the kind of yellow-orange part I'd say of the color spectrum, you know, every sensor is a little bit different. And I feel like there's, especially in the Canon, so much, I don't know, it's weird to say, like after shooting with a Sony, it really made me see how much information is in that kind of yellow to magenta skin tone area of the Canon colors. So it took me, a, you know, a few months to kind of get used to it, but the files are great. They're wonderful. You can push and pull them. It's kind of hard to hard to mess anything up. Another thing I really like is when you take the lens off, the sensor has a little cover that just closes it. Uh, I've never cleaned the sensor on this camera in two years and a month. Works great. Things that I don't care about, but you might. ISO performance, it's great. Okay, next up, who is it for? And do I think it's worth it? So this is for someone you're either working and you're doing 
maybe a lot of work or bigger jobs where, you know, it's not going to take you a bunch of jobs to pay for the cost of the camera and the storage and the lenses or whatever. So I would say if you're a hobbyist, there are cameras that are going to basically equal the image quality and be way more fun, honestly, to carry around. If you are like a maybe someone who's just really into fiddly, you know, mirrorless full frame kind of stuff. You know, like when you go to a national park and you see someone with this huge tripod and like a 9,000 millimeter, like if you're that person, R5, totally. Uh, but if you're shooting, you know, weddings, it would be fine. I, once again, think that the file size is a little big. I would probably look at the R6 or the R6 II personally. But yeah, it's a camera for working, getting stuff done. It's not really a, hi Dot, don't drink my coffee. It is not really a kind of carry around lifestyle camera, you know, it's just not. So alternatives, there's a lot really. Uh, there's the Nikon stuff, the Sony stuff, uh, Fuji. You know, at the GFX, it's, it's not anything near as quick as this is, but I think the Sony is plenty fast if that's what you need. There's a lot of options. Uh, I don't know, I just like the Canon. After I've shot on a couple of different Sony cameras and I just, I mean, even years later revisiting them and looking at current files, it just, I don't know, it doesn't do it for me, but that's just me. They're great cameras. There are people who are far more talented and successful than I am shooting all on Sony or Nikon or whatever. I just really like it. Identify what you want to do. Are you buying a camera that you just want to work with or one that, you know, oh, I want to, I want to want to take it with me. I'll take it on, you know, hikes and vacations. Because there's a couple of different worlds here. And if you're just looking for a tool, you know, if you're looking to get stuff done, then I think the R5 or the R6 or the R6 II or the EOS R, they're pretty wonderful. Another thing with the Canons is that they always seem to be, you know, kind of behind on the specs. And the thing that I've realized, like, you know, over 10 years of shooting with them and comparing them with other brands is that it's kind of with Canon, it's the intangibles. It's how it feels when you're holding it. Like the Sony, I hold it and every single angle is like pinching my hand. Um, with the Canon, it, you know, it doesn't look that great. None of them do to me, but you can hold it all day. Everything fits, everything works right. To me, it's that little minute detail kind of attention that's, that's built into the camera. So that's just me. So my good buddy, Jim, who makes black coffee in Missoula, Montana, black coffee roasting company. He is an ardent and obsessive photographer. He's been shooting Sony for a long time. He's like pretty invested. Dog just went underneath the tripod. Anyway, I sent him a folder of Canon R5 files. And after he played around with them for a few weeks and kind of messed with the autofocus on mine, compared the cameras back and forth, he is now a proud owner of Canon R5. So you never know how good things could be unless you try. Let's see if I wrote anything else down. That might be it. I think that's it. Um, it's no surprise that the camera is great. They're all great. But really, I think that if you're selecting a camera that you're going to spend a lot of time with, that you're going to work with, you, if possible, need to have the camera in your hand. And so I would suggest renting them. I use lens rentals, not an ad. I pay for it. I think it's a great way to learn a lot about the camera. What does it feel like? What are the files like? The lenses, everything else. Hi, Penny. One more thing. RF lenses are really great. They're big and heavy. You know, they're kind of a pain sometimes. Hi, dot, dot, dot. Are you crazy? But the RF lenses are great. The EF lenses are still great. The Canon EF to RF adapter, it's like 200 bucks or something, 100 bucks. It's great. The EF lenses on the Canon mirrorless system, they work better than the EF lenses ever did on like even the 1DX bodies. It, it's crazy. They're more accurate. And with the faster autofocus on the mirrorless cameras, 
it feels faster using the EF lenses as well. Dot, you're so nuts. But yeah, things work great. It just works. Uh, I really like the camera and hope this helps you out. Dot, you smell like farts. <laughs>